Welcome back. Today we're going to start chapter six. <clears throat> and chapter 6.1 is all about rational exponents. So we've talked about rational expressions, rational meaning fraction. And so we have exponents that are fractions. And so uh, we can write what we've always known as a root in an exponent form. It's so cool. So it says a positive square root. If X is a non-negative real number, then the expression, the square root of X is called the positive square root of X. And it's such that the square root of X squared equals X. Okay. So an expression like three here is the index and that is called the cubed root. So the eight is called the radicand. Um, and then the three is called the index. So let's practice reading these. In this expression here, what is the index? When you don't see an index, it's always two. What is the radicand? 256. The radicand is the, the values underneath, the expression underneath the radical sign. Example two. In this expression here, what is the index? It's a four, and the radicand is 16x cubed y squared. Okay, so find the following roots if possible. So this here is, um, we can't take it because it's an even root of a negative number. So there's no real root. We're gonna learn about imaginary numbers later. Then we can say the negative of the square root of 36. So that would just be as negative six. Then it says the cubed root of a negative 1000. Well, we can have a cubed root. So you can take odd roots. You can take odd roots of negative numbers. And that's because this is really like saying the negative root of a negative 10 times a negative 10 times a negative 10. There's three of them. And so when I'm taking the cubed root, I'm looking for a group of three. And I do have a group of three. I have a group of three ten negative tens. So a negative 10 is my cubed root of a negative 1,000. And then the fourth root of 16, so the index tells me the group size. So just like up here, the negative of the square root of 36, I was looking for the group size of two, and I had a group of two, two sixes. So now I'm looking for groups of four. So I can rewrite 16 as two times two times two, times two, so four sixes, I'm sorry, four twos makes 16. And so I, if I'm taking the fourth root of 16, I can write it like this. I can also write it like this. And then I can also write it like this. Because the exponent on inside the radicand is the exponent in the numerator and then the index is the denominator in the rational exponent. And four over four equals one. And so two to the one equals two. That is algebraically how it works. Very cool. So I'm gonna let you take a minute and read through some of the properties on this next page before we look at more examples here. So, the example I just said on the last page, example three, essentially uh, just explained um, how the exponent um, and the index work together. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to go through the some of the rules that we have with exponents that we've used before but they still apply to rational exponents so as long as you have the same base when you're multiplying exponents you're going to add the exponents 
when you are taking an exponent to a power, you multiply the exponent and the power. When you have um, some kind of a base like a times b, both to the exponent of r, that means they are individually to the exponent of r. Uh, an exponent or a base to a negative exponent means it's a positive in the, de in the denominator. So if it's a negative in the numerator, it's a positive in the denominator. Likewise, if it's negative in the denominator, it means it's positive in the numerator. Also, um, if you have a ratio, A over B, or a rational um, number, A over B, to the exponent R, that R uh, exponent applies to all values inside the parentheses. And then um, if you have two bases that are the same, a to the r over a to the s, then you're just going to take the difference of a to the r minus s. Uh, and then the rational exponent theorem <clears throat> just says that we can break apart this a to the m over n into a to the m over um, to the 1 over n. And that's the same as the nth root of a to the m. And then the square root of 16, like I said, um, we looked at this on the last page. So I'll let you take a minute and look at example four. And then we're going to practice rewriting them each as a rational exponent and then simplifying. So this says the square root of 49 times a to the 10th. So this is the square root of 49, which we know as 7. And we can break it apart and then say that this is the square root of a to the 10th, which is the same as a to the 10 over 2 because it's a square root. And 10 over 2 can be reduced to 5. So this actually simplifies to 7 times a to the 5th. <clears throat> okay, so... This is the same as saying a to the one third, eight to the one third times a to the 15 thirds. Eight to the one third, you can put that in decimals, that is um, equal to two. And then 15 divided by three is five. So this is a to the fifth. Aren't these fun? Okay, the next one is a cubed root. So this is going to be x to the 6 thirds times y to the 3 thirds, which is x squared y to the 1 or just y. The next one is the fifth root. So it's 32 to the 1 fifth times x to the 5 over 5 times y to the 10 over 5. And the fifth root of 32 is 2, and then 5 over 5 is 1, so it's just x, and 10 over 5 is 2, so that's y squared. And then the next one is a fourth root, so 81 to the 1 fourth, a to the 24 over 4, and b to the 8 over 4. And 81 to the 1 fourth is equal to 3, a to the 6, b squared. Okay, example 5 says, use the definition of rational exponents to write each of the following with the appropriate root, then simplify. So this is the same as saying the square root of 49, and that is 7. This is saying the square root of a negative 16, <clears throat> and that can't be done. There is no, no real root. Okay. This one is the cubed root of a negative 27, and because it's an odd root, we can do that. That is a negative 3. And B is the square root of 9 over 12 
And <clears throat> that is um you can take the square root of nine and the square root of 12 is not a perfect square root. So it's three over the square root of 12. And I'm gonna leave it as that. We really should rationalize this, but we're gonna learn about that later. Just like we can't have a zero in our denominator, we really shouldn't have an, an irrational number such as a square root in our denominator either. But like I said, we're gonna address this in another lesson. Okay, so example six, we're gonna get a little bit heavier here. So it says, use the rational exponent theorem to simplify each of the following as much as possible. So this is where our fraction skills come in. Because this eight to the four thirds says that I need to have groups of three, but because four thirds is not divisible into an integer, it's really one in one third. It means that I can take eight to the one, so that's eight, and then I've got um, a one third left, which means I've still got a cubed root of Um, eight, which is <clears throat> two, so that equals 16. Okay, now, <clears throat> This is gonna be similar. So this is nine to the three halves, which is nine to the one in one half. So that means I have nine to the one times nine to the one half. So I have nine times, nine to the one half is the square root of nine, which is three. So that one equals 27. And then C says, 87 to the 3 fourths. So I have 81 to the 1 fourth means I have groups of four. So I have three of these fours. So that means I'm, I've got three, three, three. Because I've got three to the third. I've really got 81 times 81 times 81. That's the three. I've got three of those and fours. So the three means I have three of these 81s and my group size is four, but I can write 81 itself as three to the fourth. So I have three to the fourth, three to the fourth, three to the fourth. So I've got three to the 12, Force, which is three cubed or 27, like I said. Some of these get a little tricky. And these numbers, these here, you could just put in decimal. Okay, number seven says simplify each expression. Remember, negative exponents give reciprocals. 
So nine to the negative one half is really one over nine to the positive one half, which is nine over the square root, one over the square root of nine, which is one third. 27 over eight to the negative two thirds. Okay, so the negative means it's one over and the three is the radical and it's 27 over eight squared. So we can worry about the squared in a minute. I know the cubed root of 27 is three and I know the cubed root of 81 is um. I'm sorry, the cubed root of eight is two. So it's really one over three halves squared is one over nine fourths. And that is really the reciprocal of four ninths. And these are really the square root of 25 plus the square root of 100 is five plus 10 or 15. So just using some properties of, of roots and what they are here. Okay, example eight says, use the properties of exponents to simplify each of the following as much as possible. So because we have like bases, we can add their exponents. So this is the same as x to the three fourths plus five fourths is x to the eight fourths, and that simplifies to two, so it's just x squared. B is a to an exponent raised to a power, which means we're going to multiply, so it's a to the two thirds multiplied by three fourths, The threes cancel and then the two fourths reduces. So it's a to the one half or the square root of a. B, we have x to the two sevenths divided by x to the five sevenths. So we take the numerator and subtract the denominator. And so this becomes x to the negative 3 sevenths. And we don't like to have negative exponents, so we write it as a reciprocal of 1 over the positive 3 sevenths. So never have an exponent as a negative. Always rewrite it. Letter D. We have x, an expression to a power. So we're going to distribute through this four fifths. So this is going to be x to the three fourths times four fifths, y to the one eighth times four fifths, and z to the five six times four fifths. Uh, so each of these kind of simplifies differently. So the fours cancel here, and we have x to the three fifths. And then in the second one, y, the four cancels with the eight and leaves a two. So it's y to the one tenth. And then the z, the fives cancel. And we have four, six is a two cancels out. So it's two thirds. So it's z to the two thirds. And we have to leave it in exponential form because the, the denominators are not the same, so they're not the same radical. Okay, letter E. We have... Um, exponents to a power on top and bottom, and then we're gonna to have to combine them because they both are a base of y. So 
the numerator, the fives cancel, and the two or four makes it one half. So y to the one half over the denominator, the four cancels, and we have y to the one third. So that means we have y to the one half minus one third. And we're going to subtract these fractions, which means we have to have a common denominator, and we don't currently. So we will, I'm going to use my LCD of six. So one half is the same as three six minus one third is the same as two six. So this is really y to the one sixth or the sixth root of y. Either of these would be correct. So a lot of rules in this first lesson for chapter six here.